What's up, guys? Welcome back. I can't believe I get to say the Chicago Bulls beat the Minnesota Timberwolves 129 to 123 in overtime, and they did the impossible. They fought back, and as a Bulls fan, you know that we all thought they were going to lose this game, but they got great contributions from the team, especially from Kobe White, who said, I am him this game. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but first, you got to hear the intro. Welcome back, guys, to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. My name's Quentin. I'm your host. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more. And with that, let's talk about it. In this game, the Chicago Bulls went down early, okay? It looked like they were going to lose this game in a blowout fashion. Honestly, at halftime, I thought it might go to a 50-point game. They did not look prepared to play the Timberwolves, who honestly are one of the best teams in the league. And part of that was because Anthony Edwards destroyed the Bulls in the first half, okay? He was shooting from everywhere. He was doing what he wanted to do, getting rebounds, as well as Cat also hitting a lot of three-point shots. This is one of the most efficient teams when it comes to scoring in the league. So when you see them take a lead, when you see them start to push, it really looked like the Bulls were giving up. They looked sad. They looked disappointed, like they were lost for what to do. And I have to give credit where it's due. Billy Donovan made changes at halftime, and the Bulls came out and stepped it up on defense, changing their plan, changing what they wanted to do. And they pretty much kind of shut Anthony Edwards down that second half. A lot of that was Alex Caruso and I would assume really pushing hard on making sure they stopped him from scoring, which even took a little bit of their own offense. But that's okay because sometimes you have to sit down and really sacrifice your offense to make sure you're putting everything to stop a superstar player like Ant, right? Now, the Bulls did their thing. The second half, they fought back. They kept grinding and it was one of those things where as a Bulls fan you saw them pick it up you saw them starting to build that lead and make it smaller and smaller and that's something where normally we would say they're probably going to run out of gas and still lose okay but they didn't they kept fighting and part of that was that the Bulls played a great game together so the first person I want to talk about Vooch and Drummond played together they both started this game this was one of the lineups where it worked okay it really worked to see the two big men especially when you had Cat and Gobert on the other side having that size having that athleticism especially from Drummond who was really boxing out Gobert most of this game Andre Drummond 16 points 16 rebounds he did his thing 35 minutes and that's one of of those things where you see Drummond play more minutes and you see him make an impact, right? We got to get more minutes for Andre Drummond. Now, the more he plays, there are going to be some issues where he makes some boneheaded moments, but that's okay. You have to sacrifice that sometimes with a player like him who puts so much on the offensive end as far as getting offensive rebounds, giving you a second chance at the basket, and also just rebounding in general. The man is one of the best rebounders in the history of the NBA. You have to get him more minutes. He can't be playing 12 minutes a game. I don't care if you don't give Drummond 35, but give him 20. Stop underestimating what he can give you as a team. You also have Vooch, 24 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. Vooch did his thing as well. And honestly, a thing I saw this game, one, he hit his threes. He went 2 for 4. So I can't be mad. I can't complain. But he was really focusing on that little floater. OK, that is where I think Vooch is at his best. Kobe was dropping it to him. Caruso was dropping it to him. DeRozan was getting him the ball and he was hitting that nice little folder in the open space. And it was being efficient. It really makes you have to think when he comes off of the pick and roll. So that's what I want to see Vooch do more, because if he can do that, it's easier for him to get these 24 point games. DeMar DeRozan, 33 points, three rebounds, five assists. DeMar DeRozan started to take over in overtime of this game. And honestly, if I'm being real, he missed the last shot of the game. I don't think he should have taken it, but he did come out in overtime and really push. He's one of the reasons the Bulls stayed in this game even a little bit close in the first half, and he's also the reason we started to really keep that lead in overtime. But that takes me to the person who really helped us even have a chance at winning this game, and that's Kobe White. Kobe 
White said today that I am him. He took over in the third. He took over in the fourth. And the man said, this is my time. And that is what I wanted to see. Billy Donovan and the Bulls gave him the keys to the game and said, hey, if we win, it's going to be because you brought us back. And he did not shy away from the challenge, hitting threes, hitting layups, getting to the free throw line. He was doing all the things you want to do when you are trying to be the superstar player for a team. And it was amazing to watch Kobe White really have this insurgence and taking over a game like this, showing his confidence. Now, the one thing I have to pick a bone with for this game to end it out is Kobe White should have taken the last shot of the, the normal fourth quarter. Okay. I know DeMar does it. I know DeMar usually can hit that shot. It was a tie game. It was 115 to 115. Let Kobe take the shot. If he misses it, great. You still go to overtime just like he did when DeMar missed it. But if he makes it, the amount of confidence that that could gain, that that could give Kobe White going forward to really be a closer for this team, we've already seen him step up in big moments. But I want to see him step up in the moment, the last possible second it's a you hit it or we go home or you hit it and we get to go to overtime or we you hit it we get to win the game one of these things it has to be a chance for you to give Kobe that second so he can develop into that player because getting him to be aggressive all game but then still not going to him even though he's hot is something that can hurt a person's confidence Right. If you scored 26 points in the second half, you're the reason the team got back and you still don't get the last shot. What is that going to tell you about what they believe in you? Okay. You also had Caruso three points, nine rebounds, six assists. He didn't do a lot. Neither did I would assume who six points, one rebound, but that's okay. They didn't need to do a lot offensively. The thing that they focused on was defense and the Bulls stepped up on defense in the second half, shutting down Anthony Edwards for most of the second half. And that is mostly because of Caruso and DeSumo really setting up, sitting down and putting pressure on the defensive end, as well as Torrey Craig, who also was great defensively and tried to help us win some big moments. The sad part is it does look like he left with a foot injury again. It looked like he could have twisted his foot or his ankle when he fell on Ant. I'm really hoping, and it's weird to say, but I'm really hoping it is just him hurting his foot with a twisted ankle or, you know, getting a weird tweak to it. But I hope it's not him re-aggravating that planter okay we cannot afford to have Tory Craig out another five six seven weeks he brings too much to this team especially with Zach being out for the year with Patrick being out with who knows how long because I don't even know what's really wrong with him at this point with the way the Bulls talk about it you need Tory Craig you need his defense you need his shooting you need his mindset and the Bulls are super thin on roster you can't keep having injuries like this okay but you got to say, as a Bulls fan, this was a game to behold. It was a game to love. Personally, I cannot do anything but smile after watching my team fight back so hard. Like, I was here watching the game, freaking out. I was stressed, okay? Working on a thumbnail for this video, I didn't know whether to make a thumbnail for a loss or a win about Kobe, about DeMar, about Ant. I didn't know what was going to happen. It was a game of ups and downs, and it's amazing to watch the Bulls do something like this against such a great team because it shows you they're not going to play like this every game, but it's in there. They have the heart in there to do this type of thing to beat these type of teams we just have to see them start to get consistent and if that means trading zach trading some people and getting some pieces that help you do it on a consistent basis then all be it but you need to see more of this because this is the type of basketball bulls fans love and what we deserve as a city a team that never gives up that fights back and can pull out the victory because they have great initiative to do everything possible to see the victory. With that, what I want to do is ask you guys a question. So leave down below in the comment section. Let me know who do you think Kobe White should have been in the All-Star game and who shouldn't be. And I'll rephrase that because I said it weirdly. Kobe White should be in the All-Star game. Who would you take out to put Kobe in the All-Star game? Comment that down below. Thank you guys for watching the video. 
Bulls win. We fight back. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as usual, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're on our way to a thousand subscribers, and I'm nothing without you guys. So I hope you are enjoying everything you see. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.